Harry Redknapp podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Prime. He's too, he's too busy to be doing a podcast. Harry, what are you up to? How's it going? Good, Jim. I'm fine. Yeah, busy, busy. I'm up to uh, London today to do uh, Soccer AM with Jeff Stelling. First time I've done that programme, so that'd be fun. Well, listen, Harry, this uh, is what I can't get my head around. You've got the podcast. I th- you know, you're supposed to be retired. You're the busiest man around. you got you doing soccer. <laughs> so- you're doing soccer with Jeff, the great Jeff. You've got a horse running. Shake him up, Harry, at Newbury today. You're, are you manager of Bournemouth at the moment? No, I'm not. No, definitely not the manager of Bournemouth. No, I, I went. To, Jonathan Woodgate took over on like yep. temporary, his temporary charge, and they asked if I. He played for me at Tottenham. I've got a great relationship with Jonathan, so he asked if I'd pop down and, uh, you know, I popped to train a couple of times. Went to the game last oh, week. Oh right, okay, fine. Yeah, just to, you know, bounce a few ideas off me. But that, that's about it. I'm not going there. They're playing to that, not Forest. I won't be obviously won't be going there. So, um, what, so Harry, what's going on with um, with Shake 'Em Up, Harry? Is it running at Newbury? How's the, how's the ground looking? How's... No, it's, it, it's off. It's off today. Oh. So it, 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 it was a bit fair hurdle, which is. a Massive hurdle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, I think it's about 120,000 pounds for the winner. Mm-hmm. So it would be a nice, uh, nice prize to win for sure. But uh, it's been put back to next Sunday. Right. Okay. They've, they've rescheduled a meeting for next Sunday, so you know he'll, he'll run then. Well, it's, best of luck with chance, that. You know, he's got a life. He's got a chance. What he's kind of ground does uh, Shake Him Up Harry like? Is he? He like soft. He yeah. needs it soft. The softer the better. Yeah. Lovely. Um, so. Uh, so where did, the, where did the idea for the podcast come, Harry? Well, someone just approached me and asked if I would fancy doing it. I, you know, and they said, you'll get to speak to people that you like and it'll be good fun and everything. So I said, yeah, it's great. Let's, let's have a go and do it. And uh, it was good fun. I really enjoyed it, chatting away to the, to the guys, you know. And uh, so, yeah, we've done 12 and uh, we made... I think we're looking to do another 12. Yeah, it's a really nice listener. I had one yesterday with Piers Morgan, and you made Piers look, seem lovely, so, you know, you're, you're doing a great job there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I didn't get much of a word, to be honest. <laughs> and, uh, and, Harry, I guess the lovely thing for you is you're able to speak to people that you've always liked and admired. For, I mean, the one, I, I guess the standout for the 12 is Rod Stewart. What was it like to speak to Rod? Fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of yeah, his anyway. Course. It's my type of music. I love Rod, you know? So, uh, to actually have a chat with him, I mean, we could have gone on for hours. He was just so good, really. I mean, he's football crazy. Yeah. I mean, he loves his stuff. He knows his stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. So, he knows his stuff. So, we were talking that way back to Jimmy Johnson's and the, the great players of yesteryear, and, you know, and that was really, really good fun for me to, to have a chat with him. Yeah. And, you, and you know, obviously, you've done, you know, Frank and Jamie, but was it kind of odd interviewing Jamie, who's your own son? I mean, what, did, you sort of t- did you sort of look back at his career and talk about that? Yeah, we chatted away and uh, asked him what he'd been up to when he used to go out at night or whatever. <laughs> but no, uh, no we, had, we had a good chat. Yeah, it was good that Frank was great. It was before Frank had lost his job, obviously, and he yeah. was chatting about the difference between playing and managing and the pressures and... Uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was all good fun. I really enjoyed it. It's a, t- it's a tough gig, the management gig now, isn't it? I mean, obviously, they're well paid and so forth, but yeah. the pressure and, and obviously the, the abuse, which is, which is you know, uh, unnecessary and unforgivable, yeah. is, is... I mean, the, the pressure now on being a manager is extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's gone crazy now. You lose a few games, you're under pressure. I mean, if you look at the top six, the big clubs this year, the normal top six, I mean, they've all been through bad spells. Mm-hmm. You know, even Pep, you know, early on, Man City couldn't win. They were losing. Liverpool have been through it. Arsenal, you know. And Frank was the only one, really. He lost his job. You know, he had a bad... Yeah, spell. absolutely. And, you know, but you looked at the fixtures, and I thought, well, they've got a good run of fixtures coming now, and suddenly he was gone, so yeah. he didn't get a chance. To yeah, he's a lovely guy as well, Frank. Well, listen, we had Jamie... Oh, we had Jamie on the uh, on the radio a few week, a few months ago now about his book, and it was a it was, he, we talked a little bit about this. It was fascinating. You went over to America um, when the, sort of the, almost the, like the first kind of uh, uh, incarnation, I suppose, of the American yeah. League, didn't you? You were over there with, with the superstars in the seventies. What was that like? Oh, it was fantastic. I went over, I went over with Bobby Moore and Jeff Hurst. We went to Seattle and played out there and. Every every game, was, every team was full up with, you know, Pele was out there, wow. Beckenbauer, <laughs> Johan Cruyff was there, everybody. It was all the, all the Dutch, the great Dutch team, of, yeah. you know, that era was, they were they all ended up playing out there. 
all that Brazilian team from 1970, probably the best team I'd ever seen play. They were all out there playing. So it was a great time to be out there. We we were averaging 28,000 people at our home games, you know? It's incredible to think uh, it didn't so work. The crowds were good. No, I, we played indoors. We played in the King Dome in yeah, Seattle. In Seattle yeah. It was great, you know? Yeah, it was a great experience. We loved it. The kids went to school there, and it was, it was a great, lovely way of life for yeah. us, you know? And and love I love the story, um, Harry, about how you got into horses because your grandma was like a bookies runner. But it, at the time, yes. <laughs> at the time, it was illegal, wasn't it? So she used to get carted yeah. off in the Black Mariah it and then she'd illegal. be back. Yeah, it was illegal. Maggie Brown, my nan, and <laughs> I'd come home from a school dinner when I was about six or seven, and uh, she'd be get, being put in the back of a Black Mariah, <laughs> to the police station. And, uh, Don't worry, boy. She went. I'll be back in, and give her a slap on the wrist, Maggie. Look, you've got, got you've got to stop this. Oh, all right, okay. And that was it. She'd be back doing it next day again, you know. <laughs> but that bookmaker was Cyril the paper boy. He was about 60-odd at the time. Yeah. Little Trilby. I mean, if you could, it, it, you know, amazing, always immaculate. But he'd come around, star who's the standard, and my nan would kick all the bets and drop him, drop him in his bag, you know. <laughs> Cyril would get arrested. He'd get arrested as well every so often. <laughs> And Harry, we don't have any traffic and travel on Radio Two because obviously there's, no, there's sort of no non-essential travel going on. So, so just to help us out, whereabouts are you, and, and what's the traffic like? It's okay. Yeah, they, they get me a driver to get me up to the studio today, which is nice. So I can read the paper, read yep. the Racing Post yep. <laughs> in the back, and. Um, uh... Oh, they have killed me, poor Danny. I came, my name. 